Halloween is finally here. It's time to get a little spooky, a little scary, and just downright horrifying. To get in the mood, I bought this fog machine. I've been running it for the past three days. But what good is a fog machine if there's no one here to inhale the schmog with me? That's why this year, I posted my address on Twitter so I can get some guests for a Halloween party. Except, I have no money for entertainment. I mean, the most I've got is a couple free horror fan games I downloaded online, and this Patrick statue. I, I, I don't know what we could do with it, we like, spin it and play spin the bottle. Spongebob Squarepants, a beloved cartoon, and also oddly a very large player in internet horror to many. Like, actually, what was I on as a kid that made me think this red-eyed image of Squidward was scary? Spongebob and horror have had a very interesting and long history together. For one, you got creepypastas like the infamous Red Mist or something a little more obscure like Plankton Got Served. I can't remember what it's about, but this is a pretty funny picture. Then you've got the real life examples, like the Yummer incident. If you don't know, it was like a hidden file in a Spongebob Flash game that I uh, don't think was supposed to be left in there. And of course, you've got Spongebob horror games. Well, not official horror games, they're all fan made. The closest thing to an official Spongebob horror game was this horrific experience. Anyway, Spongebob horror games are quite interesting. They've been around for a while. I mean, who doesn't love the classics like uh, Spongebob Slendy Pants? I believe they truly picked up up steam with the creation of 3AM at the Krusty Krab, made by Dave Microwaves Games. His Spongebob horror game started picking up traction, which I believe led to an increase in a specific genre of first-person Spongebob horror games. So today, in the spirit of the spooky month, I'm going to be playing and discussing five different Spongebob horror games. Sadly, I have to exclude the previously mentioned Dave Microwave Games, as they kept crashing for some reason. I guess my i7 processor and 3060 Ti just weren't powerful enough to run this graphical and technological masterpiece. Will these Spongebob horror games really give me and my guests a good scare, or will it leave my Halloween party as a bust? I don't have very high hopes. Gamagori! Squidward! 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 Squidward. 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 The first game is Spongebob Killer Pants, made by Messy Cecil, the game that, according to this one comment on the download page, will not work on your cousin's computer. Right off the bat, I think you could tell this game isn't very serious. The scariest thing about this title screen are all the yellow pixels that weren't colored in properly. Anyways, you're hit with some insane exposition. You work at the Krusty Krab. It was normal until it wasn't. Holy shit! The game is short and simple, you work the night shift at the Krusty Krab. You clean some tables, you go outside to take the trash, and wait just a fucking second. WHERE'S THE JUMP BUCKET?! IT'S ALWAYS ACROSS FROM THE Krusty Krab! THIS GAME IS UNPLAYABLE! Anyways, after going around the back to take out the trash, you hear a loud scream come from inside the restaurant. Investigating the noise leads you to the basement, where there's blood! Whoa! You open the door, you get greeted by the dehydrated model of Spongebob from Battle for Bikini Bottom. Him, he lunges at you, and that's it. For a short little horror experience, it was enjoyable. It wasn't Outlast Resident Evil levels of horror, but hey, it made my Tuesday night a little more bearable. I hope the creator of this game goes on to make more games. Unless he forgets the chum bucket again, but moving on. I never use immoderate language like Undertale. Next on the list is Spongebob's Day of Terror, made by Hawk Sandwich, who's quite the Spongebob horror game veteran. We'll talk about another one of his games later. The game takes place on Rock Bottom, honestly a pretty smart choice for a Spongebob horror setting. Also, I love the 3D models they use, but after the last game, everything looks like goddamn Picasso. Anyways, this time, the game takes the Slender formula, and it has you collecting items to escape while avoiding a monster. In this case, it's, uh, that one dude from the one episode. He chases you while you have to collect various items which adds to your total dollar amount. My immediate thought was to go to the vending machine, but my dumbass forgot about the ticket you had to buy at the beginning. Anyways, you get the dough, buy the ticket, and run away. It's pretty easy to win. Not only is the enemy slow enough to where you can mostly outrun it, there's two safe houses that you can't be found or noticed in. Also, I think he gets faster with every item you pick up, maybe? I don't know, could have been a coincidence, or I might just have the brain capacity of a toothbrush. Anyways, I'd recommend it. Just like all the other games on this list, it's pretty Pretty short and if you've got an extra five minutes before classes or your job or your surgery it's a pretty fun time now that we're done talking about a short first person spongebob horror game made by hawk sandwich let's talk about a short first person horror spongebob game made by hawk sandwich but this one has mr crabs let's use the secret entrance 
<laughs> the Krusty Cellar. Yet another game made by Hawk Sandwich, but honestly, I like this one way more. The cool graphics are still present, but the setting is a unique one. It takes place in Mr. Krabs' basement, where there's stacks of money and old people. The story goes that Mr. Krabs hid the formula in a chocolate bar, really f***ing odd place to hide it, but alright. And it's up to you to navigate the basement, find the chocolate bar, and return to Mr. Krabs. The chocolate bar is in a different place every time you start up the game. I never thought I'd be playing a Spongebob roguelike. You have to avoid the old fish while navigating. They stand still and they'll poof in and out of existence, but they can catch you off guard from time to time. The real challenge comes from when you actually find the chocolate bar. After collecting the chocolate bar, you begin to get chased down by the screaming fish from that one chocolate bar episode. Honestly, I kind of tensed up when he caught me, expecting this giant bombastic jump scare, but he kind of just holds you in his arms and resets the game. It took a few tries, but I found a pretty efficient tactic. You could cut him off by slamming one of the doors in his face, and you have to hug the right side of the map, because every other route back to Mr. Krabs is blocked. If you make a wrong turn or bump into an old lady, there's no recovering. Anyways, after you escape, you have to run through this tunnel with a giant head blocking it. I made the obvious insane conclusion to not run into it at first, but I guess that's what the game wants you to do for some reason. Anyways, you run through the giant head, meet up with Krabsy, and get crowned employee of the month. I really like this game, not only was it not 5 seconds long, but it was just a fun goofy time. The graphics are pretty cool, it's a decent length, and the gameplay is honestly my favorite out of the other games on this list. I mean, the gameplay is literally finding chocolate and avoiding obstacles, but I mean hey, you can close doors and die to old lady, so that's a winner in my book. I'm honestly feeling pretty good after that last game. Let's completely ruin my mood by talking about EXE games. YouTube morons are atheists! EXE games, for those of you lucky folks who don't know what those are, they're a type of horror game that takes inspiration from Sonic EXE, a classic creepypasta game about this iconic character with bloody eyes and a dental hygiene problem. Also, holy shit, while making this, I found out that the original Sonic EXE game is almost 10 years old. How is that even possible? Anyways, this is a Spongebob.exe game. I haven't covered an EXE game on the channel since I used Sony Vegas and couldn't resize images, so it should be a pretty fun trip down memory lane, right? I, I, I couldn't even think of anything funny to say here. You just gotta witness this for yourself. Anyways, cancelled 2005 Spongebob GBA game, oh my god, that's a mouthful, was made by Sonic2008 and posted to my favorite pit of despair, Game Jolt. Quickly before we start, I'm just critiquing the game that the creator made, not them as a person. This goes to everyone else on the list. Keep working on your games. I know I sure as hell couldn't make one. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's dive right in. Is that the mother f***ing scratch flag? The game opens up with a lovely disclaimer read by Spongebob and the gang. The voices are all done using those text-to-speech AI voices they have online, but for some reason, the Patrick voice is just a dude doing an impression. They inform us that this game is, quote, not for underage children. Sorry, toddlers, infants, and newborns, you gotta sit this one out. Why are they saying that? I thought my first one job were for kids. Anyways, there's three parts to this game. First is the intro. The logos load, you select a tiny plankton on a fake Sonic select screen, and you load into Plankton's evil scheme. Except you don't, because Plankton never existed and you move on to the next part. The second part starts with all the intro audio in reverse, including the entire disclaimer, which was sorta of unnecessary and I just had to sit through it. The second file select is for Patrick and Patrick's Krabby Patty Madness. This one's actually a game, albeit a bad one. It's just a standard Pac-Man clone where you keep changing sizes, you stick to the walls, and you're being chased by the cheeseburger clown from Veggie Tales. Holy sh! That unlocks some deep memories. I couldn't tell you why, but for some reason this mini game is just full of veggie tail stuff. Between the enemies that chase you and Larry the Cucumber, who's just in the top right corner. Anyways, there's three rounds, and after each round, the screen gets, uh, scarier. Also, I'm 90% sure it's impossible to win. I swear on my life, I got that last Krabby Patty, but they still said I died. Anyways, you get to the last round, there's blood, and a black mysterious figure kills you. I couldn't tell what it was until I opened up the game's files and, uh, okay, alright, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that's, that's something. Anyways, the final part of the game opens up with some dialogue, a bloody Nickelodeon logo, a sad Patrick, and the final character select screen, my man Squiblard. Except when you select this character, nothing happens and you just get a fake anti-piracy screen. 
Th that's it. That's the end of the game. Now, the reason it ends so abruptly is because this game was actually scrapped by the creator. Okay, I'm not sure if it was anymore because I saw this in the description, so I thought it was scrapped. It was actually part of the game. Anyways. But after digging into the files, it seems like this fine gent had some, uh interesting plans for the rest of the game. It was a fun enough time playing it with some friends in the middle of the night. That is the highest honor a creepypasta game can get. We're down to the final game on the list. And you wanna know why I chose this one for last? It's because I paid four bucks for it and I'm never going to see those four dollars back ever again. I think I'll take some prescription Benadryl. The True Ingredients, another Spongebob horror game, <clears throat> I mean, another Spongebob parody horror game made by RenderPie. I say parody because it used to use Spongebob characters, but then it changed to parody of Spongebob characters, you know, copyright stuff, whatever the f Anyways, this game has had a fairly big boost in popularity lately, with YouTubers like Markiplier and Speed playing it. Will it live up to the hype? It goddamn better for my hard-earned cash. The game opens up with an ever so slightly terrifying Spongebob creature looking at you. You hit start, a skeleton asks if you're ready, which I'm very much not, and you're flung into this life-changing experience. It opens up with a little bit of lore. You live in Underwear Zip City and want a famous human patty for lunch. We all do that from time to time. In the Krusty Krab, excuse me, while in the crunchy cans, you could talk to a screaming fish, watch the terrifying Patrick monster, or order some food. The menu is quite diverse, but I think I'm gonna go with a human patty. You sit down, you wait, you witness someone's death, and you find out that your order was never actually being made. Fake Squidward tells you that instead of someone here actually doing their job, you have to go to the basement and grab a patty yourself. He also tells you not to go to the end of the hall, so of course, I completely disregard that warning and do it anyways, but I was met with the loudest and fastest flashing lights jump scare I've ever seen. I'm gonna edit down a few jump scares in the game because goddamn, it is like the creator wanted someone to have a seizure. Anyways, you grab the patty, you're told to cook it for yourself, which once again, not my goddamn job, but all right. And finally, you can have your burger. Surely you won't have to pay an absurd amount for the burger, not have enough money, and be attacked by a giant crab. Well, fuck me then. The second part of the game takes place in the basement, where you meet up with a horrifying plankton trapped in a cage. Finally, there's some different gameplay, in the form of a puzzle to exit the room you're in. After that, you find and use a crowbar to help plankton out of the room. But oh, don't forget to put the crowbar back before continuing. That would just be so rude to hold on to it. You then have to open this safe for some reason in a very funny and hilarious way. Get this, you have to find a computer, watch the Rick roll, and get the code. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. The fumes from the smoke machine are starting to reach my brain. Anyways, after putting in the code, you open the safe, and there it is. I sure hope Plankton doesn't get crushed trying to take it off the platform. I gotta stop calling these things. This leads to the final part of the game, which involves running away from the horrific SpongeBob man from the title screen. There's only three ways to beat this part. One, you can die, but I'm just so talented and cool and funny that I didn't. Two, you can just keep running, which leads to an ending of you being grinded up and turned into patties. And three, where you decipher this code that I had to look up and the Shrek comes out. And then the Shrek has a standoff with Spongebob and, and then he gets shot and he does the rock face and then he blows up Spongebob and, and then the game ends. Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, that's cool. I was so lost when I saw this. I had to research and it turns out that the Shrek dude is a callback to another one of RenderPie's games called Grek. Ah, yes, of course. How did I not know that? Anyways, that was the last game on the list. It was definitely the most visually interesting game of the list. I love the weird little goofy models used throughout the game, especially the fish guy. He was my favorite. I mean, I don't really know what else I could say. This game just has the similar critiques I gave to the other SpongeBob horror games. It's short, it's fun for a quick little game with the boys, and I will never pay $4 for something ever again. And that's it. I finally picked out all the games to play at my Halloween party. Now we just gotta wait for a guest. Ooh, my first guest. I'm coming. Oh my god, Squidward, it's you. Wanna play spin the bottle? Hey, it's me, Squidward. I'm here for the party. Oh, whew. what just happened? I, 
I think I passed out from all the fumes from the fog machine. Wait, that means I haven't played any of the games yet. Yeah, no, f that. I'm going to church or something. Now shake a leg and you will get slim You know it